since um since most of the videos that I do uh, particularly towards uh, some of the friends that I have in my messenger window like enjoy um, one of the things that I've tried to do most of my life whenever I engage in a conversation with other people when you're you just sort of feeling each other out or getting to know one another right and um, Because I think that most intelligent people that I've met throughout my life would would at least acknowledge um, that what we experience here on this planet uh, is uh, it's it's obvious that it's an energy harvesting system. Okay, um, I mean the, the math actually speaks for itself when you think of consciousness that is mathematical. Uh, and you use a basic arithmetic calculator of memory plus and memory minus, right? Uh, in an APIN system, which is an application of your energy to experience what you do and why we experience what we do wherever we're at, right? Um, and so, um, for some reason, and I, I, I believe I, I pegged it, sometimes when I experience... Uh, whether it's a page that I'm reading in a book, it can only be maybe three words. It may only be one paragraph. It could be four seconds of three words in English. And all of a sudden, snap. Because then I'm going to realize, um, why am I revisiting some information that I've already experienced? But you know how it is sometimes when there is so much stuff that, that you're processing, uh, you know, running a supercomputer, a biocomputer, uh, and, and that old saying sort of fits when you say, stop and smell the coffee. Um, and so it's like slowing it down a little bit enough to realize the impact that just a few words can have on sort of what I call condenser. You know what a, con a concentrate is or a condenser. Um, bring it down into the most least common denominator uh, that makes it simple to translate why we're experiencing something that is out of balance if you will, or, or a unit of consciousness that is finding it necessary by the use of its own energy to suck energy or feed energy off something else that is living. Because when I was a child, that was, for me, that was called counterintuitive. Because if you're experiencing eternal unconditional love through your own heart, then you know that you've got a connection to what love is. So you're experiencing real living light. So you're experiencing being loved. So you know from which you came. You were born out of what love is. Because we're experiencing what love is. But they're not experiencing what love is. See? And, and so when you get into um, just using a simple example of, well, how old is the universe? Or how many units of consciousness are there that are experiencing what they are in energy that is able to communicate to another unit of energy that is conscious and aware of itself? And then try and put a number on that that is connected to everything else that is of what's happening simultaneously in energy, which is consciousness that is experiencing itself in its own mirror. Right? So over the course of my life, there were different times when we'd get in, when I would get into these kinds of conversations with other folks uh, so that some folks can understand where you're coming from. Thus, they learn who we are and I learn who they are. And then, and then out of that, um, you're ex ex essentially exchanging the math and the physics upon which the template that you're running is now communicating one template with another. And that's called a scan, right? So the consciousness that is running one template and the consciousness that is running a different template. So now you're able to measure the difference between what, an inverter and a torque converter, or if you will, the difference, the differential and the torque speed between one and the other. In a, in a polarized universe. So when you're experiencing being one with all creation that you're gifting love to, then you're non-polarized. You're one with all creation. So there isn't any separation between what they are and what I am. And that's what allows you to experience what they're experiencing, no matter what it is. So then the metric is automatically going to be, are they experiencing what love is by virtue of the template or the software that they're running? Right? And now you're in the clearing the miasma side of this. So... I realize how uh, difficult it can be when you think of time and energy and if you think of energy as efficiency, right? <laughs> Performance objectives, 
I remember having taken a class when I was at the University of Arkansas in a graduate school. They actually had a class that was geared towards those folks that after taking that class would qualify them to get a job to like go into a corporation as part of human resources and training, right? Uh, where they were having, say, a lot of problems in being able to do what? Uh, maintain, not just maintain their balance, but accumulate more electrons at a higher rate of speed, which does what? Gives them a higher level of security by acquiring more energy off of others. Okay? And so how that sort of works and being able to maintain the balance, zero, if you will, which means I got all the energy that I need. I don't need any electrons from you. We're the source from which we're accelerating the gifting of electrons at a higher rate of speed. So that now we're back into learning, which is the learning curve potential, right? Curve space vectors and the speed at which you're learning, what I call cleaning up your mirror or diffusing or t transmutation, actually which is uh, the speed of getting rid of things that do not service because you realize that it's slowing your speed down and which to do that because you're essentially running a wastewater treatment plant, right? Or if you will, the metabolites, the rate at which we're aging, right? Cellular age, you know, the ability for cells to regenerate themselves, right? Or if you will, regenerate the proper codes that are firing, you know, that represent all occurrence. Right, all the way up to D12 and how that's explained in a lot of the, the Voyager Guardian materials. So here this morning, I revisited uh, a video that I watched a number of years ago, but it's not like I didn't experience the same thing in words that she was explaining and describing the underlying causality of how you end up in a fallen system and the intelligence or the mathematics upon which time to link different systems into itself in which it has a source of energy to maintain what it's aware of, and particularly when she used the word immortals. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I remember my clan mother had put up a link to Dan Winters in that group. Uh, I think they got a, a coming together of Lazarus, and you get into all the golden mean ratio, and, and Dan Winters is, is, is extremely knowledgeable. He's obviously a very intelligent guy on his ability to do the math and the geometry, right, uh, if, if you will. But I noticed on the title of this particular video link of a, a, a conference group, right, uh, about what it means to be immortal. And I remember that Patty Broussard had, had put up a list of those that were immortal. And so... The reason that that is important is how we define the difference between eternal and immortal. So in other words, if you're feeding on a source of living light energy, which is real living light energy, and you have found a way in, in which to bend light and it becomes artificial light, right? Then you have, then you have a technological means, the biotechnology means in order to maintain what you're aware of and energy as long as you have a source to feed from and which to be able to do that. So there is a difference between immortality and the manner in which they can do that. But we obviously need a source of energy in which to make it immortal because anything that is immortal, as she, as Ashaya mentioned, is finite. Because you're not needing a source of energy from which to experience what love is that goes on forever. And that's knowing the torque speed differential between one and the other. Right? And so that ties directly into the Matrix Trilogy. Because I met the guy that wrote the original book called Immortals. And the thing about it is, is when you think of I am mortal. I'm mortal, not eternal. So eternal is eternity, which is a flame or a fire, right? You have a flash point and an ignition point, an initial coil, the ignition coil, right? Which means you're experiencing God's love, right? Now, for me, it's a mother God. In the way that we use how we define a nuclear reactor, if you will, between hot fission and cold fusion, the joint force has become one, which is non-polarized. So it's real simple because it simply means the law of one, 
which is the center point of creation, which is an eternal sun, which is experiencing itself, experiencing eternal, unconditional love. And it's unconditional because it doesn't require a charge. That means it's not polarized. That's as pure as it gets. So that's pre-matter phase consciousness of the purest love, which is the purest energy. That's where the idea of purifying comes in. Now we're back to an eternal spirit of fire. So you know that fire is what purifies, right? A virus, viral codes. That is meant to do what? Corrupt the template. So that, that template is not experiencing God consciousness, or if you will, eternal consciousness, eternal love consciousness, pre matter phase, in and out, at the highest rate of speed to go in and out of matter between pre matter and matter. Right? So uh, I. These, these are what I call important distinctions by virtue of learning through others what they become aware of, they share with us, and then they give you the manifestation mechanics or the mathematical geometry of how they put, how the histi- from a historical perspective, uh, how we come to arrive at a point in which we're experiencing what we are that has some rational, self-evident mathematical way geometrically to to come to grips in sort of the least common denominator uh, to answer uh, why am I experiencing a loss of energy in me when I'm not supposed to experience a loss of energy in me, but it's because I'm experiencing the loss of energy of somebody else and a result therein, they, that becomes essentially an energetic vampire in order to maintain what it's aware of because there's a need to take energy from something else. So by virtue of that, you realize that's finite. Unless they've healed, right? To remember from whence we all came, which was born out of what love is. So I use the example with, with Misha and knowing that she's not going to lose anything that she didn't already start with. And so for a lot of folks, when they realize that, hey, I'm, in, I'm finite, and, and, and the fear comes in is, is the resistance that they have to let go. Right, and um, and b- because it's 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 uh, you know I went through this when I when I was pretty young in my teenage years when I I realized that when you when you realize when you're willing to accept the truth uh, and and this is where I sort of simplify this particularly when I went through Alcoholics Anonymous and you get into the step one step two step three. Uh, because I suppose out of all the numbers of all the folks that I ever met in a lot of those rooms, uh, when it comes down to just admitting that you have a problem, right? So if you admit that you have a problem, okay, that's base, that's first base, right? Okay, so now that you admit you got a problem, and then the biggest part is whether or not you want to surrender to yourself and make a commitment to yourself in order to make a course direction, in order to restore what you were once aware of, right? which is what love is, because it began with what love is. So that's restoring your energy, which is rehabilitate your spirit connected to your soul so that you're experiencing the primal light and sound fields again, right? So that means that you have to be willing to, to do that. And that's your free will right to do that. But if you're in resistance to doing that, right? So it, it would be like saying, listen, I know that I'm finite. I'm not going to lie about that to myself. I realize that because all I have to do is examine my own behavior, my own mirror as a result of what I'm using my energy to do. I admit that I'm using my energy to feed on somebody else's energy because I realize that I've lost my connection. Right? So therefore, what it means is is that when you think about the way that time works, you know, um, it, it means that you're, you're fighting a, a losing battle against God. Because there'll come a point when the cosmic reset will take place, right? So, so, and I remember having experienced this myself as a teenager when it's like, when I thought about, when I thought about putting together a bucket list, for example, there were a lot of places that I wanted to see and I wanted to go experience when I was a teenager. And so I made like a bucket list. I wanted to see Glacier National Park. I wanted to see the Redwoods. I wanted to see Yosemite. Wanted to see Grand Canyon. Wanted to see the Great Smoky Mountains. I had like a list of 16 different places. And I thought to myself, if I can at least in my lifetime 
be able to experience how beautiful those places are with the love that I have with my heart, to be able to experience the beauty of that artist, which is our mirror, then I will have been happy that I will have known that for in my lifetime, because I realize the way that numbers were being defined by the way in which that information is being presented to us, that the average life expectancy of a human being for a male was like somewhere around, um, what was it, 72 years of age, and I think females were somewhere around 74. I realized, well, you know what? I don't really have to worry about that because that's like another 50 or 60 years from now. Oh, heck, man, I got a lot of time, see? So it, it, a lot of it has to do with the perception of time, of how much time related to energy that you think that you have because you realize between then when I was experiencing that and now, I was a flash. Wow. Man, I went from experiencing what that was, putting a bucket list together, and I'm where I'm at right now in time where my physical age is 71 years of age, and yet it seemed like it was just a second ago that I was experiencing what I was at that time, in which I did that when I put that list together. Because I've managed to be able to visit all those different places and, and a whole lot of others besides that. Right? So it, it's sort of like realizing that at some point in time, you're going to run out of time. Because time doesn't really exist. It's actually an illusion. Okay? Which means there will come a point in which the universe is naturally going to do what the natural flow of energy naturally does. And when that happens, it would be almost as if, well, I'll worry about that when that time comes. Because even though I realize I'm finite and there's going to come a time in which I'm going to implode, uh, I might as well just take advantage of what I can for the time that I have left before that happens. And then just accept it as just a part of what happened. And I'm willing to accept that. But I don't need to do anything to make any course correct between now and then because it's going to happen anyway. So that's a delay tactic, right? even though the level of intelligence acknowledges that it's a fallen state of consciousness. So now we're back to free will choice, and now we're back to wanting to make a commitment to be a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem. Right? So that's a free will choice, right? So I realized as a child, then, you know, living in the truth is being one of the best. Because love tells no lies, because love doesn't live in a lie. So when you know that love is the absence of a lie, and love is the truth that we experience, because you're experiencing the source from which it all began, um, and that makes a, a, a simple, that's a simple translation, right? Uh, because love is the absence of fear. So then you would say, well, they live in fear of experiencing what love is. That's right. And that's the resistance that they have to heal. And I experienced that with a lot of different folks. So you experience it. So it becomes a resistance game in a polarized universe between a negative and the positive. Right. And that's really what it is, which is the torque speed resistance differential between one and the other. Right. To maintain the balance in the poles, which is a balanced state of consciousness between the co-op. Right. And the hemispheres. Yeah. You know, between the, the biveca and the triveca, you know, becoming one, three and one, the relationship between fire and ice, right? Becoming one, the balance in the, in the pressure systems, you know, the ecosphere, the echosphere, the echo, the echo. So I wanted to thank her for that because you can see how certain pieces of information that are communicated by others ties into other pieces of information experienced by others, how they communicate to us what they're experiencing, and they communicate with us what we're learning through them, how they experience being what they are. All right. But at the end of the day, it's always going to go back to when I was four years of age. It began with what love is. That's what I am. It goes on forever. Gifting love energy. Right, so that means I got a connection through my heart and my soul to experience what love is that I share with everything else that's alive and living in nature. A natural flow of energy. Go with the flow. Tuned in to all the stars, right? Naturally. So you're experiencing a state of equality or an equilibrium state 
which means when you, everything is equal unto all that we're giving love to, right, then that makes it an easy translation, right? That's like being at the center point of a cosmic eternal sun, right? Love is what heals us. That's who we are. Have a great day. Be good to yourselves.